you know, everybody in the family tells me, I mean, fr friends of mine tell me, uh, my family, all my family, they tell me I would make a good 911 emergency operator. Well, I, I would do it, but the hours are too crazy. Now, I have done it before. Not the 911, but I did uh, work for the police department for a short time. I was a police dispatcher. This was back in uh, 1988. 89 I know it wasn't 80, 1987 because 1987 I was in Florida and uh, so decided to come up here to see the family again and end up you know, leaving Florida I wish I'd went back but anyway uh, so nine, I'm trying to remember 19 when I walked into this convenience store uh, 1988 1989 somewhere in there anyway a uh, girl I knew worked at a convenience store it was called Big John's sort of like a UDF today you know United Dairy Farmers but it wouldn't it was a it was a convenient it was called it was a convenience store and she worked in there so I'd go in there often and talk to her I get me a pop and we just sat around and talk um, it, it, the, the, her manager said it was fine you know, this is Kentucky. Down there, uh, up here in Ohio, you, you can't do that. You can't really sit there and talk for two hours to your friends. But Kentucky's a whole different style of life. And she said her manager, her manager said it'd be fine. You know, keep her company. So I had a little chair there I'd pull up. Well, I didn't sit in a chair because her counter was high. So I just stood up for two hours talking to her. And one day... I walk in there, and she just got on, you know, hello, Greg, as I come in the door, hello, you going to stay for a while? She always asks me, you going to stay for, stay for a while? I said, yeah. I go back there and get me a, sometimes she'd buy me a pop. I go back there, well, when I went back to the coolers to get me a, a Pepsi, a deputy sheriff walked in, police officer, and I could hear him talking to her. To, to her. And she asked him, she said, did you find your replace? Did you find a uh, dispatcher yet? He said, no, we're still looking. So hold on. I, I walked up to him. I said, you looking for a police dispatcher? He said, yeah, we need one badly. He said, why, are you interested? And his police radio was up a little bit. He, he turned it down so he could talk a little bit more. You know how a policeman always has their radios going. He said, you got any experience? I said, well, I'm a licensed ham radio operator. And uh, I got I worked on computers uh, August of 81. So, well, you know, uh, seven years ago, I told him I was operating a computer. And to me, it was easy. He said, well, he said, go to the courthouse, talk to uh, Sheriff uh, Roger Stevens. So I did. Matter of fact, went that evening. And I go into the uh, police department. Sheriff is there. You know how they say, can, I help, can we help you? I said, yeah, you're looking for a police dispatcher. Your deputy. I gave his name. I met him at the convenience store. He said, well, you got any experience? I said, yeah, you know, I pulled out my license. I'm a licensed ham radio operator. I used a computer, started a computer back in August of 81, seven years ago. He said, okay, he said, let's, let's go in there and give you a try. And he had me to, he got on, he, he had me to sit down, turn on, well, the computer is already on. He said, let's see what you can do. You know how a sheriff would talk. I got on there and with the greatest of ease and he said, find me some warrants. He, t he gave me a name, which I won't give out. He said, show me how it's done here. And I went right to it. He looks at me. He, he looks at me. He says, "You're hired." <laughs> hired me right on the spot. So I got to dispatch for state state police included. You know, when you dispatch, you're you're dispatching for all branches. 
not just a sheriff, not just a deputies. You're dispatching for state police. Now, when they need extensive, they are state police posts in London, Kentucky. That did not mean they didn't uh, communicate with me because it's local. And uh, did I like being a police dispatcher? Yeah, I did. But it's a demanding job, folks. You watch this stuff on TV. You know, you got to be there. You know, TV sometimes doesn't show you the whole picture. Always keep that in mind. Whatever you see on television, in your mind, your brain, broaden it. TV doesn't show you that. And it could get rough. Multitask, multitask. Uh, you know, phone ringing. The craziest thing. What was the craziest thing I ever had to do? Lady calls up. I need, I need a sheriff over here. What's the problem, ma'am? My husband's beating the hell out of me. I says, well, if he's... It sounds like you're running. He said, I am. He beat me. He beat the hell out of me five minutes ago. Now he's got a knife. And you can hear him run. You can hear him scream in the background. Come on. Come here, you old bitch. And they're running. And she's screaming for her life. He's got a knife. He's going to kill me. You know, you can hear him running, both of them, running hard. You get her. <sighs> she's breathing like that. Well, I dispatch the sheriff, you know, code one, urgent. You can hear the sheriff turn on the siren. Well, about two hours goes by, and the sheriff gets back. Now, for when he gets there, he, he lets me know. And when he's finished, he lets me know. You've seen, you've seen how it works if you watch TV. Well, this is real life. This really happened to me in real life. Anyway, uh, he uh, after after he gets done with the incident, he, he he radios me like he's supposed to. I'm the dispatcher, and and you know I had to log everything. You know I'm done here. Okay, ten four. You know top military time. I cleared him. Well, he finally makes it back to the office where I was working. He's laughing. He looks at me. I said, well, how, how's that? How, what happened? He said, well, first of all, they've been married 46 years. Now, when I, he said, when I got there, now he asked me, he said, are you sure you logged it right? He asked me this. I said, yeah. And I, I, op and I pointed to him. I said, re, re, you know, I logged, logged it. That He had the knife. I logged it. He said, you're right. He said, well, when I got there, it wasn't like that. I said, what do you mean? Somehow he said she got the knife from him. And instead of him screaming, come here, you old bitch, I'm going to kill you. He was her screaming, come here, you old bastard, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> he said, we have to go up there every now and again. <laughs> And settle them down. You know, been married 46 years. <laughs> I've never known them to kill each kill each other yet. But as he pulls up in the driveway, there, you know, when he pulls up at their house, you can see him running in the yard. And he looked closely, and somehow she got the knife from him. Big O knife. Those hibbillies, they don't play around. No, they go for the biggest. <laughs> but somehow I said this what startled me she was out of breath how does she have I told him this how does she have the energy to get the knife from him he said the hell if I know he always threatened him if I have to come back here again I'm going to arrest you both he, he never did arrest them and they knew that 